Welcome to Subramani. Uh, Warren Buffett talks of two types of scorecards. One is the internal scorecard and one is the external scorecard. When you keep working on the internal scorecard, the external scorecard does not bother you, right? It does not bother you as to what people think about what you uh, are and what you are doing and uh, what you have, right? That does not bother you. And because it does not bother you, it does not bother other people. Now, this is a very funny uh, way to start a video on should you lend money to your friends and relatives? Uh, I am not including parents and siblings in this. Uh, that I think I should do a separate video. Uh, there are two types of people. Those who are working on their internal scorecard and those who are working on their external scorecard. And similarly, there are people who like to have a lot of uh, uh, show off assets and, uh, people, uh, and people who like to have uh, non-show of assets, right? So, non-show of assets are the real assets. Like if you have uh, investments in uh, shares in mutual funds and uh, insurance policies, whatever, right? All those things are never visible. If you take a 2 crore uh, term insurance policy or a 5 crore term insurance policy, are you going to frame it and put it up in your house? Answer is no. Maybe you won't even tell your children about it, right? You may just tell your wife as to where the policy is kept. So, uh, you have mutual funds worth 5 crores, 10 crores, 2 crores, whatever be the amount. It's not something which everybody will know. Yes, your chartered accountant will know while filing returns. Your wife will know because uh, she's signed the documents and assuming that she's uh, uh, seeing what uh, statements come. Assume for a minute she's also not interested in what she's looking at that. Then nobody else other than your chartered accountant and uh, somebody else in his office. And maybe you, other than that, nobody else knows how much is your total investment. One particular fund house will know how much you have invested with them. But will they get the overall picture? Answer is no. So, nobody knows that you have money. So, you lead, let's say you lead a very simple lifestyle. You are in a not very well-known suburb. Or in a well-known suburb, but you have been there for last 30-40 years. So, people think, oh, you bought that house when it was uh, 1 lakh or when it was 2 lakhs. Now, it is worth 2 crores. Whatever, people don't attribute your effort to that increase in price. You drive a simple car, maybe a Honda City or something even less than that or equivalent to that. So again, people don't think and people say, oh, company must have given him a car, whatever. So that is how people rationalize. Now take the other case where you uh, uh, are earning well and you are willing to live it up, right? You bought a new house. Uh, you, bought, you buy a new car every once in 2-3 years, your children have gone abroad for studying, you go abroad for vacations, right? So, these are your visible assets are those which people can see. Uh, and when people see a lot of visible assets, there is a tendency to say, oh, can you give me some money? This starts right from your domestic servant to your friends and uh, relatives, uh, even your sibling. Everybody wants to now suddenly want a part of the uh, pie. Now, in that group, if you go and say, oh, my uh, maid servant borrowed an X amount from me, it doesn't matter, 3,000, 30,000, 3 lakhs, whatever be the amount. And uh, now she is not paying or she has left and etc, uh, etc. Et the first reaction of your friends, though not on your face, is to go home and say, look, he has got so much and he's creeping about 3,000, 30,000, 3 lakhs, whatever. Let's say you have a 30 crore net worth, then again 3 lakhs becomes irrelevant. Right, but somebody will crib about you cribbing, right? So be careful about it. People, when you have money, or rather, when you have show off assets, people tend to think that it is your duty to give them money. So they are asking money not because they need it, but because they think you got so much and you don't deserve it. So part of that should belong to me. So find out what they are asking. Are, what are they asking you? Are they saying, look, I'm stuck in this place and uh, I don't have money. I need money to come back. Then it could be just a fake uh, WhatsApp message, right? Be careful, pick up the phone and talk. So see whether you are getting cheated. Is your friend really in trouble? Second, see how is your friend in trouble, right? Whatever. So, wh why is he or she in trouble? I know a friend recently has lost a lot of money in forex trading and he's passing the hat around and collecting money from friends and relatives to pay off those loans. Those loans are big, right? So, if that is the thing, then whatever you give is a complete waste unless you can sit and actually ask him or her how he or she is going to come out of this mess, right? So, that find out the reason. 
third find out how is he going to repay you right that's important whatever amount be the amount whether you give him 5 lakhs to buy a house or 5 lakhs to pay off some other loans which are usurious rates find out how is he going to pay it's a good idea i have done this in the past of picking up a friend's uh, credit card loan and saying here is the money pay off the credit card and repay me in installments he did repay that's very important because i didn't want him to lose some 30% interest or 36% interest and never be able to repay the full card and it was not a big amount of course it was long back it was about 14 15 years ago and the amount involved was 70000 rupees not a small amount but not to big an amount it was not a big amount for me to be killed by doing that so uh, that that is one way find out why is he got into trouble uh, it's also possible that it is a medical uh, loan which people require to me in my head it is more or less a medical gift very unlikely that if a person if a person is incurring medical expenses beyond his or her means chances are that money won't come back So if the person asks you for five lakhs and you say, okay, I'll give you fifty thousand now and maybe later I'll give you, you when you're giving this fifty thousand, mentally write it off. Very unlikely that it will come back. Of course, if it's a person who says I have a liquidity problem, uh, in forty-five days I am expecting a FD to mature and I will use that to pay you. If the person is so upfront, then the case is very different. Another important thing is when you are a husband and wife, you have to remember that the money belongs to both of you. Immaterial of who is earning. Assuming the wife has given up her job to look after, to have kids and to look after them, you can't just uh, assume that all the money is yours. The money is half of uh, for both of you. So if the husband's friend wants a loan, the best is to uh, tell him. Tell your friend that please talk to my wife. She takes the finance decisions regarding my friends. Now what happens is your wife can be less emotional about your friend, and she can at no stage say, "Look, you gave money to your friend; it's not coming back." Ultimately, it is joint property, right? So if I, if my wife gave money to her brother and it didn't come back, it would hurt me. But if my wife said, "My brother wants money; will you talk to him?" I talk to him. I'm convinced, then I give him money, and the money doesn't come back. Then at least we are jointly responsible. so be jointly responsible between the husband and wife before you give loans right so this is another important thing while giving a loan also find out uh, why do they need the loan is it to show off something is it to repay some old debt whatever find out the reasons uh, i believe when a friend of mine approached me i realized he was a big mess so i said uh, look i will pay for certain things i will pay your school fees your children school fees I'll pay for your term insurance, and uh, I think you're anyway getting rid of your car. Otherwise, I would have paid for car insurance. So these are things which people may uh, not prioritize. They may just, you know, say, "Oh, uh, I'll pay it off later." But later payment never happens. So you can't let your term insurance lapse. You can't let your regular insurance lapse. Your regular insurance won't lapse because if you've paid for more than three, four years. they'll take money from it and keep it alive so that's not so bad so find out the reasons why the person has got into trouble uh, say i will pay only for term insurance i will only pay for medical insurance i will only pay for children school fees issue a check in their name because somebody could have got into trouble because of alcoholism gambling share market losses whatever don't get into that if you like that family right at least pay for the term insurance pay for the medical insurance pay for the school fees other than that you don't have to pay right having said all this involve your spouse and then make the payment thank you